I am the world's worst meal planner. I know everybody says, if you wanna save money on groceries, you gotta be a meal planner. Well, I always found that when I made meal plans, I went to the grocery store and they didn't have this or this or this, and then my whole meal plan is out the window. I get asked this one question all the time. How do you feed your large family gluten-free on a budget? I get asked this question all the time when people find out that I'm gluten-free. I'm celiac, my oldest son is celiac, so any gluten in our house will cross-contaminate us and we'll be really sick. It, it's happened. We tried to separate out the gluten from the non-gluten and then, yeah, it just, it never worked. So we are a family of 10, even though not everybody has to be gluten-free, we're all gluten-free. So that's my disclaimer at the beginning of the video here. We're all gluten-free and we're gluten-free every day, all day. And all of our meals are 100% gluten-free. And we do this on a really, really, really tight budget sitting on my tractor. I know a lot of people do their YouTube videos sitting in their car. I just felt like sitting on the tractor instead, to be honest. So I'm sitting out here and I've been thinking about this video for the last couple of days. Food has been on my mind, let me just be honest, for, for a really long time now. With the cost of food being, I don't have to tell you about inflation. I don't have to tell you about the food shortages. I don't have to tell you about supply chain issues. I don't have to tell you any of that because everybody sees it. Every, if you don't see it, then I don't know, maybe you're blind. Feeding my family is one of my favorite things to do. One of my love languages is acts of service. So feeding my family good, wholesome, nutritious food has been something that I've always wanted to do. It's something I'm very passionate about. And we weren't always gluten-free. And being gluten-free sometimes sucks because the cost of everything is way higher than regular food. That being said, it's been a blessing because it taught me how to be even more resourceful, how to be frugal to a degree that I, I never thought possible. So I'm gonna share with you in my rant today how I do that. Because people ask me it and I'm gonna say it's complicated and it's probably a bit wordier. So bear with me. <laughs> I'm gonna try to make this as concise as possible. Number one, we grow what we can. Now in the city, this meant growing in grow bags, five gallon buckets, pots, you name it. If you've seen any of my other gardening videos, you'll know that I talk about this all the time. I have a couple videos that I actually made while still living in the city. We grew what we could with what we could. It's possible. Number two, we buy local. When we can, we buy local. You would be surprised how much meat you can buy directly from a farmer in comparison to what you get in a grocery store. About probably 10 years ago now, I was looking for a source for raw honey. It was important to me that I feed our family local raw honey. I found a farmer who sells raw honey that's harvested locally, but he also happened to be a chicken farmer. And he came into the city once every three weeks, I believe. And we bought honey from him, but we also bought chicken. When you buy whole chickens, you can part them out yourself. You can make them whole and make different meals from them if you have leftovers. We never have leftovers on chicken. But we started to get to know him. And whenever there was a deal, we got more, more meat for our buck because we were buying directly from the farmer. That's one of the main ways that we save money. Now, living out in the country, we had a couple farmers when we were living in the city. Where we were living, it was closer to go to their farm shop and buy bulk from them. They would have like 20 pounds of ground beef for a certain amount of money and it just brought the price way down and it was grass fed, grass finished beef that was a little bit more expensive at the time than the grocery store. Now it's on par, if not sometimes even cheaper. We found a new beef farmer who gives us a great deal on ground beef. So we only spend about $1,500 a year on beef because we got it. We, we buy in bulk. Now I, we don't, I'm going to be full up and honest. We do not buy half a cow. We do not buy a whole cow. We don't even buy a quarter. We buy the cheapest cuts and we buy those in bulk. Most of what we buy, is ground beef. It's versatile, it's a, it's a good protein to feed 
the masses because that's essentially what we're doing we're feeding a lot of people so that was that's another thing that we do we have a, a good relationship with our neighbor who is a chicken farmer and we buy our chicken now from him last year we raised them ourselves and this year we decided he gave us a good deal we buy, we get them at cost so what it costs him to raise them that's what we pay we're not raising any chickens this year except there's a little exception and this is where I said it's complicated we do raise chickens for meat we raise roosters I hatch out eggs every spring and whatever roosters there are we keep one or two of our favorites that aren't jerks that are nice to the kids nice to me and are nice to the ladies if you haven't seen my video on what happened to Stu we also raise turkeys turkeys are much more economical for us to raise as a family there is a lot more meat on there and we also part those out grind up some of it into turkey ground turkey some of it into you know the different parts and we use that in place of chicken for example another thing we raise are ducks we raise those for meat as well as eggs the one big thing that we raise more than anything was a deal breaker was the one of the main reasons to leave the city in the first place was eggs we as a gluten-free family if you've baked gluten-free you know or especially paleo recipes there are like five eggs in a loaf of bread there are like five eggs in a cake those recipes take a lot of eggs and during the early days of the pandemic they put limits on them so our family for being totally honest here we consume about two dozen eggs a day that's in breads pancakes waffles fried scrambled omelets you name it we eat a lot of eggs because we have a lot of eggs so that's something I don't buy from the grocery store at all when we were in the city and we couldn't get eggs it got scary because I didn't know what else to eat I didn't know how to make the bread without eggs. I didn't know how to make the simplest things without eggs. We couldn't fry an egg. And I was like, how are we gonna make this work? So we found somebody who goes out to the farmers and it was a middleman, we found somebody else. So there are ways of getting around egg shortages and get to know people who raise chickens and you can grow your own breakfast. We garden. We grow as much as we can. We live in zone 3B. Our growing season is literally from the 1st of June till the 1st of September. We had frost last week, the last week of May. So we really only have a couple months to get her done. We forage what we can. We're learning to eat a lot more things that grow in and around us. And I'm gonna be sharing some really cool recipes. I shared uh, with you recently a dandelion jelly recipe. I also made some dandelion infused oil for salves. But I'm getting off, I'm getting a little bit off topic here. We grow as much as we can and we forage a bit and then this is where the real savings come in. We buy in bulk as much as we can. We compare prices. We price match. I go to the store where the things are the cheapest. I only order, almost exclusively, only order my groceries online. I order all of our regular weekly groceries through the app for the stores that I go to. And I buy online for curbside pickup this saves us so much money i am very undisciplined when it comes to going in a grocery store I'm like oh look at that oh i'm shiny object syndrome here and i'm i'm fully admitting it this is my like this is how i cope with shiny object syndrome i buy online i set out a budget that's 200 dollars between two or three stores i have to get all of the things i need and then we go pick those up and bring it home i let somebody else do the shopping so i don't get sidetracked I don't spend too much on other things now the odd time will go in if we've run out of something I and if we're in town anyway I will go in and then if I happen to see a deal then I will snap that up and just take that amount of money away from the next week's budget so that's how I do that I buy in bulk we don't coupon here 
there's hardly any coupons and if there are coupons they're usually for things that we can't eat like Oreos or Ritz or you know something that's pre-packaged processed food and I do not buy a lot of processed food we buy lots of single ingredient foods and then we put them together and we cook from scratch 99% of our meals are from scratch from the things that we have here on the farm so we buy in bulk I shop around for the best price I buy a lot of our staples on Amazon and Costco so things like tapioca starch I buy on Amazon buckwheat I buy on Amazon and then um, our almond flour we buy at Costco and we buy our nuts most of them at Costco sometimes at the grocery store if they're on sale we buy in bulk so I buy everything in bulk now that doesn't mean I don't buy individual you know packets of spices or whatever but what I do is I have a fully stocked working pantry that means my freezers are stocked my shelves are stocked the bucket with spices is stocked the the five gallon buckets with my gamma lids are full my shelves are full and I can cook anything out of any of my recipe cookbooks on any given day as long as I get the meat out on time no problem because I have everything there this I found the number one way to keep my budget low is to have a fully stocked pantry so I'm only buying groceries to maintain what we have with the exception of buying maybe something special for you know Christmas birthdays or stuff like that like I don't always have um, maraschino cherries for example if a recipe would call for that I would have to buy that extra I don't have tons of that it's not something I use very often but for I have chocolate chips all the different flours baking soda baking powder sugar salt all of that vinegar you name it all in bulk so that I can go and do whatever I need to do now in order to do this I started off at the very beginning of the pandemic I said okay we have a budget I went out and spent I think it was a thousand dollars on groceries to stock my pantry that's when I started stocking the pantry before that I had you know jam and pickles and you know a bit of tomato sauce and not much else and this is when I got serious because every time I did curbside pickup I was missing things and then I couldn't make the things that I put on my meal plan now I do not meal plan full disclosure here I do not meal plan I try <laughs> and I fail every time and the extent of my meal planning is hmm tonight I think we should have this for dinner and then I pull stuff out of the freezer and then I pull out of the shelves and whatnot as needed because I am really literally the world's worst meal planner I will not sell you meal plans I promise cross my heart <laughs> I will never sell you meal plans because I'm not good at it there's other people who are really good at it but <laughs> for me it just makes sense to have a large working pantry and that the day before two days before like I, if I know something big's coming up and I know I'm not gonna have time to cook I will plan to pull something out and either cook it the day ahead or throw it in the slow cooker um, that's how we roll around here it's not maybe for everybody but that's what we do I'm a big picture person that's why the big pantry I need to have all the things <laughs> it's it's crazy I used to fight this I used to think I was a terrible person because I couldn't meal plan I used to think there was something wrong with me if you can't meal plan there's something wrong with you I could I never could do it I failed consistently and so every time I watch a video it's like the, the way to save money is to do a meal plan I'm saying if it works for you do it it doesn't work for me so I don't do it beginning of the pandemic I stocked the pantry as much as I could I bought doubles and triples of the things that I could buy that weren't limited and I started every week buying one extra or two extra if it went on sale I would buy 10 extra depending on what it was and this is what I've done to build up this pantry so that I can basically go it's like a little grocery store and pull out whatever I need it's maybe not everybody's thing but I, I like it because it gives me peace of mind that I have all these things there and that's how I can feed my family on we spend 200 Canadian dollars so it's about 175 US a week to, to maintain that now that's buying like fresh ingredients we'll buy milk like almond milk not 
real milk, except for my husband's coffee milk. We'll buy salad in the winter time or cucumbers, whatever, you know, vegetables or fruit we feel like eating within a budget and potatoes, we always buy those. Now, this large working pantry also works in another way. I will buy, if I find a sale, for example, on potatoes. Every once in a while, they'll sell a 20 pound bag for, I think they're $5. Now, regular is $8, but they don't always have the 20 pound bags. But if I but get the 20 pound bags and they have them in stock and I order three, I order 60 pounds of potatoes because we go through about 40 a week, depending on what other sides we do. And then I'll buy an extra 20 and I'll can those. If beans are on sale, I stock up on those. Uh, about a month or two ago, the dried rice pasta was $2 a bag. The regular $3.99 or $3.49, depending, they kind of fluctuate. $2 a bag, I bought, I don't know, six or 10. So basically, to feed our large family, I have a large working pantry. I grow as much as I can. I forage some. I buy from farmers. Well, that was a very long-winded answer to the question, how do you feed your large family on a budget? gluten-free, whole foods, and the whole nine yards. I... I know we're kind of all in the same boat right now. Whether you're gluten-free or not, the price of food has gone freaking bonkers. And it looks like there's no end in sight to this craziness. So I'm going to continue to make videos and try to share with you some of the ways that I do this. Cause this is something I just love doing. I'm kind of nerdy. I love to geek out and, and save money and do a lot of things on the really cheap. But I also don't want to sacrifice quality or nutrition in this case. If you can't tell, I'm really passionate about this kind of thing. And I would love to hear, share with the community, share your comments below. What are some ways that, that you are able to save some money on your grocery budget? Put it down there in the, in the comments. Let's help each other save some money and, you know, do what we can in these hard times because I, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm, I'm concerned with where this is going. I'm, I'm really worried. Like, am I going to be able to feed my kids? So I'm doing everything I can now. And I don't, I don't feel like there's a guarantee that what I'm doing is right. I just know that over the last 23 years that I've been married, I've been able to feed my family every single week. There has not been a time when we've gone hungry, no matter what happened. And so I'm trying to be as proactive as possible. And I want to share that with you. I'm really passionate about this and I want to help you feed your family. You know, and I know some people are here because of the gluten-free and I really want to give you options and share with you some of the things that I've done to feed our family on a really tight budget. We're a really large family. I'm not saying it's easy because it's not. Making all your meals from scratch is time consuming. I'm not good at meal planning, but I'm good at planning big things, the big picture, getting the pantry full. I'm good at planning, okay, we need to get this done and getting it done. I'm good at executing, maybe not good at planning, but I'm good at executing things and getting them done. I want to inspire others. If you find this video useful, please share it. I need to get this message out to more people. I want to help more people get their pantries stocked because we really don't know what's coming. And I want to share with you all that I know about growing food and growing animals and, and getting things done frugally, you know, with nutrition with in mind. I care about you. I care about your kids. I care about my kids. I really want to do this. I want to make the world a better place. And I, I want to start one meal at a time, one pantry element at a time. And I really want to inspire and I want to help you be that homesteader that you were born to be. And don't tell me you're not a homesteader because you don't live on, on big farmland been homesteading in the city. I know baking your own bread, that's homesteading. Preserving some of your own food, that's homesteading. Growing some food, that's homesteading. You are a homesteader. Remember that you're a homesteader and you can do this. You can grow food, you can preserve food and do it. Let's do this together. Let's grow, let's go, and let's do this. Until the next video, take good care of yourself. Bye.